This is a meeting of the Fall River Commission on Disability for Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Roll call, Sandy Barraby. Chairman Dennis Paul Sally. Present. Vice Chairwoman Debbie yes. Pacheco. Present. Commissioner Lisa Silva. Present. Commissioner Dan Robillard. Present. Commissioner Ann O'Neill Souza. Present. Okay. Next item is public input. Is there any public input? <laughs> Is there any public input? <clears throat> and I'll ask one more time. Is there any public input? <clears throat> All right, the next item on our agenda is approval for the minutes of the meeting of August 17th, 2022. Well, motion to approve the minutes of August 17th, 2022 of the Fall River Disability Commission. Second. Second. Thank you. Um, are there any discussion? Okay. Roll call vote. Chairman Dennis Paulselli? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Debbie Pacheco? Yes. Commissioner Lisa Silva? Yes. Commissioner Dan Robillard? Ye yes. Commissioner Ann O'Neill Souza? Yes. Okay. Uh, the next item is the only item to vote on at today's meeting, with the exception of adjour adjournment. <laughs> um, and that is the election of officers. Um, we will be electing chair, vice chair, and secretary. I'm going to turn the meeting over to our vice chair, uh, Debbie Pacheco, uh, for the election of the chair. All right, Madam Vice Chair. Madam Vice Chair. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, renominate Dennis Fasoli as Chair of the Fall River Disability Commission for the year 2022-2023. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> Roll call vote. Chairman Thank Dennis Paulselli? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Debbie Pacheco? Yes. Commissioner Lisa Silva? A big yes. Commissioner <laughs> Dan Robillard? Hell yes. Commissioner Ann O'Neill Souza? Absolutely yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Um, wow. And thank you, my colleagues on the Commission, for your support. I appreciate this very, very much. The next um, office to be considered is for the position of Vice Chair. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner. I'd like to, I'd like to renominate Debbie Pacheco as the Vice Chair of the Fall River Disability Commission for the year 2022 and 2023. I'll second that motion. Okay. <clears throat> Chairman Dennis Pauzali? Uh Wait, wait, okay. Oh. Um, yep, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, oh. What am I doing here? Yes. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no discussion, so a roll call. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Lisa Silva? Yes. Commissioner Dan Robillard? <clears throat> yes. Commissioner Ann O'Neill Souza. Yes. Congratulations, Madam Vice Chair. Even though my head is in a 
fog. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, appreciate everyone's support. We can't do it without all of you. So. And the next is for the position of secretary. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner. I'd like to renominate Lisa Silva for the position of secretary for the year 2022 and 2023 in the Florida Disability Commission. I'll second that motion. Okay. Roll call vote. Chairman Dennis Paulselli? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Debbie Pacheco? Yes. Commissioner Dan Roblard? Yes. Commissioner Anna O'Neill Souza? Yes. A big congratulations to Lisa Silva. And thank Did you Lisa vote? Know. Oh. No, I don't want to vote for myself, must I? <laughs> uh, you can abstain. What is it? You can abstain or vote. Well, since my colleagues unanimously voted for me, I will say yes to myself, too. <laughs> <laughs> nice Congrats. try. Congratulations, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, the next item is our guest presenter. Um, just a little, very, very, very short introductory background. Um, um, I, I, I heard about this this um, individual and this program specifically on a program done by our esteemed colleague, Ann O'Neill Souza, every Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. <coughs> on WSAR. She does a show called The Sixth Floor Re which I highly recommend listening to. Um, and Anne had, is that for me? Um, <laughs> and and um, um, the guest were uh, was a Captain John Morin from the Fall River Fire Department's EMU division, um, who discussed a program called Care. Um, Care Fall River, which is designed for seniors and individuals with disabilities. I'm going to turn the floor over to um, Lieutenant Nick Silva. I hope I'm correct on that. Lieutenant Nick Silva to give us more of uh, um, information about the program. Guys, thank you so much for having me. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here and to be able to um, discuss this program. Uh, so I am Lieutenant Nicholas Silva I'm from the Far River Fire Department uh, EMS Division. Um, I created this program, uh, designed the program, and I oversee it uh, from the office here. Uh, we started it in, I would say, uh, April, um, and we've had some really good success with the program. So the program is Fall River Cares, which is an acronym. It actually stands for Community Assistant Research. Uh, resource education services and what we provide is free uh, we do in-home assessments um, to clients 65 or older or people with disabilities of any age and what we do is a home safety check we check the entire house for safety concerns um, everything from loose floorboards to loose railings uh, we provide all our clients with um, information on healthy eating for seniors, healthy stretches, and healthy activities for seniors to do. Uh, we do a medication reconciliation, and at the end of the program, we make recommendations for the clients to try to keep them healthy, happy, and safe in their homes. And then anybody that needs assistance uh, with anything, we work with our current partners, uh, including Bristol Elders, Council of Aging, uh, the Veterans Association, um, and numerous others to try to get them uh, the help that they may need if we discovered any uh, lacking resources. So we have, we've had some really great luck with it. Uh, they seem to be really receptive and really grateful uh, for the free program. Anybody have any questions? Um, I have a, the, the one question that I have is, um, is there um, an income eligibility uh, component to this? Is, do you have to be of a certain um, <clears throat> certain means to take advantage, or could this apply to any senior individual with disability in the city? No, this applies to, to absolutely anybody and everybody, uh, regardless of their of their income. 
Um, obviously, there is a unfortunate, you know, if, if a family does have money, they have a better ability uh, to take the recommendations. You know, some of the recommendations that we make are in, install shower railings, install bath seats, uh, which, you know, assist in and out of the tub. Some families have the money to appropriate that kind of stuff, and some families don't. So we try to spend some of our time finding uh, community uh, resources that would help pay for that kind of stuff to get them installed for them. But to contact you um, for this program, um, uh, it, it doesn't require that you qualify in any way except for the fact that you're a senior and an individual with disabilities. Would that be correct? And that would be 100% correct, sir. Okay. Mr. Chen? Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, well, Chen, thank you. Uh, I'm intrigued by this. Um, first question is, uh, what gave you the idea to start this? My uncle years ago was the uh, EMS director in Fall River for a long time, so I've always had a special place in my uh, in my uh, heart, so to speak, for EMS. Well, I, I appreciate his service, and he's obviously done a great job because this department is thriving currently. Uh, he, uh, so. he, he, he retired long ago and has since passed away, but thank you. He was a I fine public No, no problem. Um, so I, I actually based the program on... Uh, stuff that I did for, for my grandparents. Um, they, you know, they're, they're starting to get up there in years, and basically I went to their house and, and tried to say, hey, you know, uh, this house isn't safe for you anymore. We should, we should try to change a couple of things. Uh, you know, for some reason they, they're older, they're Portuguese, and they're stubborn, so they didn't want to listen very much. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 honestly, it's... It's simple little things like, uh, you know, for some reason they wanted to keep all their really nice china uh, on the counter and leave all their dinner plates that they normally use in the top shelf, which they had to get on a chair to get. And, you know, that didn't make any sense to me. So we basically moved the, 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 the stuff that they used all the time to the countertop and moved the nice stuff out of, out of reach where, you know, it's still there if they wanted it to show it off. But uh, the stuff that they use every day is now on the countertops at an easy, accessible um, range. I went through and made sure all their smoke detectors were in, in good working order, uh, you know, gave them information on what they should and shouldn't be eating once they get up there in age. Um, you know, they're yeah. both 75 at this point. Uh, so really the program was based on what I did for my family. So I know for a fact that when my guys or myself walk into a home, they're getting the same care that I would give my family because that's how I based the program. Uh, how, how many, uh, how many, um, how many uh, assistants do you have in the fire department or in the EMS uh, wor working on this program with you? So we have uh, four full-time paramedics dedicated to this program, uh, plus I have myself and uh, Captain Warren oversees the program, and we fill in when they get overwhelmed or, uh, you know, if they decide they want to take a, a day off or whatnot. So we fill in sporadically for them. Yeah. And uh, I, I think this is great. Uh, just a point of information to the general public, while your, your particular part of it is free, uh, services for Bristol elders and other such agencies uh, do have income guideline requirements and things like that. So people should be aware of that, uh, I believe, uh, 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 if you're going to get services through other agencies, often there are income guidelines that you must meet in order to be eligible uh, for, for certain services. Uh, Massachusetts also has a great personal care attendant program in the state of Massachusetts, which gives uh, eligible seniors and people with disabilities uh, the ability to basically run their whole uh, care program on their own. Um, you can have a case manager and stuff like that if you want, but uh, it's one of the great programs in Massachusetts. Uh, Bristol Elders does a fine job and other agencies. Um, I wanted to say one more thing, and I can't remember where I was going. Uh, I guess that's it for now. Great job, uh, Lieutenant. Thank you very much.
Thank I you. Really I really appreciate it. I like the program because it's another way of keeping people with disabilities and seniors in their own homes and independent, and that's 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 a very good outcome. Uh, very quickly, Mr. Chairman, I just thought of what I wanted to say. Uh, Lieutenant, have you ever considered partnering uh, with uh, Michael Dion? Um, and I'm drawing a freeze as to uh, in the community development office for for things like. Uh, uh, modernization, uh, repairs uh, to bathrooms and other such areas in the house, or, uh, yeah, it wouldn't apply to modern housing, um, minimum housing, but uh, it, uh, Michael Dion may be able to uh, give some assistance there with community development. Yeah, I, I, I haven't thought of that yet, but that's actually a, a fantastic idea. Um, we've been doing a lot of work to try to make good connections with our community partners, um, you know, Greater Way, uh, Fall River, and Greater New Bedford area, um, United Way with them too. So we've just been trying to make contact and, and try to partner with all of these programs, any program really, that could potentially provide uh, services to any of our clients. Uh, you know, uh, our, our motto is the more the merrier. Uh, how many clients, um, I hate that word, so I'm going to refrain. How many people, I, clients sounds too institutional to me, how many people are you currently serving? Uh, so right now, I think that we have provided uh, a home inspection and a safety inspection for, I want to say, about 40 to 50 people so far, which is really great considering yeah. this is the first year that we're doing it. I, 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 I never want any names. I never want to break any disclosures, anything like that. Do you know of the people that you've gone in to see? Do you know how many of them have followed up and gotten services with one of the community partners? I don't have that exact number. <laughs> uh, so generally what happens is once we do an inspection, uh, we leave them our recommendations. We try to give them the numbers of, you know, whatever community partner we think is going to best help them, whether it be Bristol Elders, Council of Aging, uh, Veterans Association, whatever it may be. And then we give them our number again and tell them, listen, we'd love to do a follow-up, but we leave it all based on, you know, each individual person. If they'd like to follow up with us, we love it. We go back, we do another assessment for free, uh, you know, see if they did make the changes. Um, and we have done a few of those. I'd say probably seven or eight. Um, and they have yeah. taken the recommendations. They did follow up, and they did get some, some of the services provided by our partners. Great. If you get any questions uh, regarding transportation availability, refer them to SRTA. They run fixed route uh, bus services in the city of Fall River, as well as paratransit demand response. Uh, if you're looking for more information, I can get that to you uh, offline through email or meet up with you somewhere to get you a couple packets. Yeah, that would be absolutely fantastic. Okay. Thank you very much for your service. Great job. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield. Anyone else have any questions? <clears throat> None at this time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant, thank you so much for, for your time. and. As you know, these meetings are recorded, so this will be on our website as well as on FRG TV. So this is a good way to get the word out. Fantastic. I greatly appreciate the opportunity, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item is work group updates. Is there anything from the ADA update? I don't have any at this time. I don't have any at this time. Not at this time. Uh, policies, Vice Chair? None at this time. Um, we just received today the budget report for August under finance, so you can check with the <clears throat> budget report. Um, and outreach. I have just one small matter to bring to the Commission. It's nothing... Um, it's nothing outlandish or anything, but we are actually getting feedback from um, agencies and organizations who go on our website and have asked us to post links to their website. 
I just got one today. And what I like to do before we go ahead and post them is vet them. So what I will do is I will send you, we, and we did this with the um, learning disability um, booklets publication that was um, <clears throat> that had come to us to post their resources on our website. What I will do is I will send the link, and if you guys, if 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 my colleagues can get back to me and tell me that this is okay and give me some feedback, then I can I can go back to the gentleman and say yes, we'll be happy to post a link to your website. So this is this is good um, because people are going on and checking it out and checking out the resources, and that's um, that's one of the things I think we were really hoping that would come out of our of our website. So <clears throat> <coughs> anything else? Uh, anything, Lisa? <coughs> okay. Um, is there any old business? Okay, hearing none. New business. There's going to be a change in our next meeting. Um, our clerk is going to be um, uh, um, uh, getting a well-deserved vacation. So we're going to be meeting on October 5th instead of the 12th. Um, same time, 3 o'clock, but, but just a note under from the bottom of the agendas that we'll be meeting at, at 3 p.m. on October 5th instead of on October 12th. And also next Monday at the Flint Senior Center at 10.30 in the morning, Eric Joseph, the Executive Director of the Audible Local Ledger, is going to be speaking at the Flint Senior Center about the Audible Local Ledger, and uh, he'll have some radios and echo dots um, um, to give out so that people can access the radio reading service. So if anyone has some free time or would like to come down and, and hear him out, he'll be at the Flint Senior Center next Monday morning at 1030. Is there any other new business to come before this commission? None at this time. Okay. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Hey. Oh. <laughs> It's Do Tammy. I... Oh. oh! Retract that adjournment for a minute. <laughs> okay, we're going to retract the adjournment for a minute. Um, um, because I was trying was... to get in for the ADA update, and I wasn't pushing my button fast enough, and then you kept going. So I thought you would just like to know an update on what's going on on Go my ahead. end. Yep. Yep, the floor is yours. So, you know, we're still trying to come up with some things for the um, the ADA grant, you know, put out by MOD. Um, I did get uh, a list of concerns from our Veterans Center on Pine Street. So I was attempting to take their list and turn it into something that could be feasible for the grant. And I um, contacted Stark Architects because they're the ones that had handled uh, the council chambers and the hearing room upgrades when we did that. So they went over and uh, took a look at what was going on. I gave them our transition plan list for that location and they were supposed to get back to me with you know a dollar figure that we could put on the grant uh, like by the end of August and it's been like pulling teeth to get them to um, finish what they started and give me something concrete so I'm still after them to do that, which I don't like doing. I would have rather have just gone to somebody else. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is, I guess, at this point. And they assure me that they can come up with something for our grant to insert. Um, 
before the deadline. My concern right now is because our grant writer is on vacation, which she did notify us about. Um, but hopefully we'll get something in uh, for this grant. I'm trying really hard <laughs> with everything going on over here. Uh, as far as the polling places go, I think that what has to be done, like as far as signage and stuff, I can do that in-house with our with our money. I I would think that the Pine Street location may come up with a with a more uh, a larger dollar amount to be able to ask for, even though I don't think it's going to be significant, but it'll be something. Uh, so, with I that being said, uh, we haven't really moved forward too much <coughs> on that. I'm still plugging away, and hopefully, we'll come up with something uh, to get that in in time. I think there's a December deadline for the grant. Submission is that no, there's a, a September 30th deadline. Oh, okay. To submit the application, and probably December 30th is when they will announce I think. Yeah, yeah. I okay. bet because okay, I we I remember probably. last time we didn't get the funding until just like at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. and then it had to be used by June 30th. <laughs> Yes. So it's a very quick turnaround, and which also concerns me with this architect because, you know, they would be on the on the hook to get out all the documents in place very quickly, and they're kind of dragging their feet. While so, you're here, mm -hmm. um, I just want to tell the rest of my colleagues on the commission, the community access monitor training has gone virtual. Um, I. I attended yesterday the Acton Commission on Disability. Um, day one of the training was yesterday, and it's on Zoom. Um, you get the same kinds of materials, the slides, the notes, um, the photos, and stuff like that that Jeff Dugan presents in his presentation on Zoom, and you can ask questions and everything. But if when I get notices now that these are virtual, I'll, I'll make sure that I pass these around and. If people have an opportunity, and I know with jobs and everything, that's you know that's not possible. This is uh, it's not two days in a row. This particular training was part one was yesterday, and part two was next Wednesday. For some reason, mm. that's the way they're doing it. But I just want to say that I highly recommend these. Um, many of uh, I know that on the commission, um, several of us have already gone through it, but. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I always circulate these to um, to you, Tammy, and to the f facilities maintenance department because I think this is a really good way to, and plus they offer continuing ed training. This is a good way to find out, you know, how things should look and grab bars and parking spaces. And he goes over the regs for the fine tooth comb and presents that in training. So this is a really good training, and it's even better now because it doesn't cost anything. It's, it's, you can right. go for your home or from your office. But um, So I actually thought I signed up for it, <laughs> and when I went to sign in, evidently I never – I had everything filled out on my desk, which made me think that I had sent it in. But um, <laughs> when I wasn't getting a link, I – I emailed them, and they said, yeah, you didn't sign up, but we'll notify you of all the future ones now that we have your email address. So Good. I am yeah. linked in, and I was excited to <laughs> sit and, and join in yesterday. Um, the only reason why I'm doing it again is in case there are updates, because sometimes these right. things, like in the, the state access building code updates and so on, there might be some updates, mm -hmm. but otherwise... Um, this is this is really I think um, yeah. uh, this is really really one of the best and easy ways of, of getting some good training. So. Mhm. Mm I agree. This commission has sponsored two of them over the years. Yes, that's right. The most recent was 2018. Um. And now it's even easier. I mean, 
I can talk to our work group um, maybe sometime next year, and it's all it's all virtual now too. So I can talk to our work group and see if we can we can put it together for the city of Fall River. But um, since I do send out notices about these, I, I, I if I if I do do that, I don't want to stick my neck out and get thrown under the bus. So I would. If we do something for Fall River, I, I, do, I hope we get a turnout from Fall River, and I think I, I, I'd like to. I'd like to do. I, I know you can't mandate this, but I'd like to see one almost exclusively for building inspectors and those, those type of yeah. people within City Hall that would would be working with this stuff. You know, so. Um, between the work group and Tammy, why don't we see if there's an interest in, in doing a, a CAM training for just Fall River personnel? Because um, it's not just building departments, because they go over the ADA law, too. So it's, Oh, absolutely. Uh, I just use that as an example. But we'll see if there's a we'll, – we'll, we'll, we'll work as a work group to see if there's an interest in doing it just for Fall River. This would be great for the school department as well. That's right. So, is there anything else, Tammy? Uh, no, I'm glad I could insert myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for not You're giving welcome. up. <laughs> All right. Okay, is there any other new business? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, roll call. Chairman Dennis Paulsali? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Debbie Pacheco? Yes. Commissioner Lisa Silva? Yes. Commissioner Dan Robard? Yes. Commissioner Ann O'Neill Souza? Yes. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.